Stigum gives some uh, concrete numbers in order to motivate this. And so she says that uh, triple B um, and double A both go into the market and, 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 and ask their bankers, you know, what will you charge for a floating rate loan? What will you charge for a fixed rate loan? And they receive the following uh, information. So term loan with a floating rate and a five-year fixed rate euro bond. Okay, that's her, that's her example. And they receive, let's just say, just for, uh, for example, uh, these quotes. Six-month uh, LIBOR plus one quarter, six month LIBOR plus one eighth. Okay. So double A, this is the credit rating thing. Double A gets a lower rate quote than triple B here in the short term. And here we get 5.85 and 5.375, okay? And once again, triple uh, A gets a lower quote than, 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 double A gets a lower quote than triple B. A lot lower, actually, here. The difference is 47.5 basis points here, and the difference here is 12.5 basis points. And what that means is that we have 47 minus 47.5 minus 12.5 is 35 basis points. Okay. To work with. I'm going to I'm going to explain in what sense we have 35 basis points to work with. But um, there is a win-win possibility here because of this number, this 35 basis points. Um, and there's a negotiation that's going to take place about who gets those basis points. The, uh, or they don't necessarily split them right down the middle, and you would expect, right, okay, that AA gets most of them, you know, because if it's the, if it's the, the better, better borrower. What's particularly interesting is, you can see, is, and there's always this analogy to comparative advantage, Remember this from intro, intro economics, where one country has absolute advantage in producing two goods, both, both goods, but, one, but and the other country has comparative advantage in one? Well, you can, that's sort of what's going on here. You can see that triple, double A has absolute advantage in borrowing, period. You know, it, it's, it's, it's borrowing at a lower rate than, double, than triple B at, at all, at all uh, maturities, okay? But that difference is a lot bigger in the long-term market than here, it's just tiny here, okay? So uh, triple B has comparative advantage in borrowing short term, and, and, uh, uh, and double A has comparative advantage in borrowing five years. I'm not sure that is really a very good way to understand this, but the math works that way. And so if you have intuition about comparative advantage, it can help you understand here at the beginning why it, why it works, even though double A has uh, real advantage. So, she then says, um, let's, uh, oh, here, here's my numbers here. So let's have double A do its, uh, well, I can actually put it over here now because it's the same, the same thing, okay. She says, let's have double A do its fixed rate borrowing at 5.375, just like that, okay. And now, instead of today's <laughs> swap rate, um, let it do a swap at 5.50, okay, against LIBOR flat, LIBOR plus zero here. And that's going to be the same here. This fixed rate will be 5.50 because it's a, it's a bilateral uh, transaction here. Um, and, uh, and we're assuming this is uh, LIBOR plus one quarter. Again, from, from that, except that it's six-month LIBOR. 
so that it lines up with the, with the swap here. Um, well, what is the result of all of this? What the result is, is that triple B achieves fixed rate funding, okay, and what are they actually paying for that fixed rate funding? They're paying 5.50, absolutely. Here, these don't net out. LIBOR plus a quarter, and here's LIBOR, okay, so they're pl paying plus a quarter. So they're p paying a, fi a rate of 575. So they've locked in fixed rate funding of 575, which is 10 basis points less than they could do on their own. So they got 10 of those basis points. Do the same math here, and you say double A is locking in LIBOR funding, okay, but we have here, they could borrow, uh, the, the difference between 550 and 5375, okay, means that they acquire funding at LIBOR, okay, minus an eighth, okay, which is they could borrow on their own at LIBOR plus an eighth, so there's an eighth and an eighth difference there, okay, which is a quarter, which is 0.25, which is 25 basis points. So double A got 25 of the basis points, and triple B got 10 of the basis points, and that's where the 35 come. This is just an example, okay? But it's an example that shows uh, why, there I why people do this, you know, why, why firms would ever want to swap, given that, that one of them has an absolute advantage. Um, and it allows AA to get LIB funding at less than LIBOR. Less than LIBOR, le less, less than the standard going rate. Why are they getting funding at less than the standard going rate? There must be some exposure they have here. Well, and of course, there is exposure. There's exposure to triple B here. Because what can happen here, triple B, okay, is, is saying, okay, that they will, will be, be paying you, okay. You know, they, they have this flexible rate borrowing here, okay, which they are paying their bank. They haven't gotten rid of that, right? They haven't gotten rid of that. All they've done is to hedge it. So they now have a swap that is a hedge against, against movements in that, in LIBOR. It's a hedge against movements in LIBOR, okay? It's not a hedge against movements in their credit rating. So if, if six months from now, their banker says, okay, I'll roll your six month funding, okay, but now I want LIBOR plus one, okay, not one quarter, they're not hedged against that they still get LIBOR flat on their swap, you know. So they, they're, and, and, and in other words, Triple B could run into trouble rolling its loan, and if it runs into trouble rolling its loan, it could run into trouble paying the swap that it's promised double A. So there's some kind of exposure of A to the potential problems that Triple B has. But it's not really the same as credit risk because it's a swap, okay? If triple B stops paying you, you just stop paying them. And that's the end of the story, okay? So you just rip, rip it up, okay? Now, it's changed in value and all of that, and you wind up losing in that sense, but you're limited and you're, you're not losing some huge principle that they owed you. You've, you're losing a payment. You're, you're losing a net payment, as a matter of fact, fixed fix versus floating. Okay, so the credit risk that's involved in, in a swap is a lot less than an actual parallel loan, right? In an actual parallel loan, they could default on the whole loan, okay? And then, and then where would you be, okay? But there, there is no actual loan. There's just an agreement to make these net, these net interest rate payments. The interest rate swap, uh, in fact, a lot of these swaps come into being because of certain kinds of market imperfections. Um, that one borrower has access to low-cost funding um, in their local area because the government likes them or something like that, okay? And no one else has access to that. And so they use that access and they essentially, a, as a source of profit for themselves, to use that access to then swap it to somebody else and make, and make money on that. So they're breaking down these, these uh, inequalities across, across markets. Um, when there are capital controls and things like that, the, there, there can be 
uh, you know, it, it just could be that the bond market is very immature, okay, in whatever country Triple B is in, okay, so they're, they're not able to borrow very easily. Well, so they can just do it this other way, you know, borrow this and then swap into the long, into the long rate until their bond market grows up and becomes, and becomes liquid. So um, market imperfections are uh, another reason this exists.